Good morning. Christian is to be a disciple 
And this prayer will teach us discipleship. I call it the prayer of the kingdom. A disciple is committed to the kingdom of God and this prayer will teach us commitment to the kingdom. This prayer will be the jacket we need, the clothes we need, the armor we need as Christians, as disciples. And so therein is the good news of the Lord's Prayer. That it is in many ways too big for us. But keep persevering. And remember this teaching of Jesus ends with a teaching on perseverance. Keep persevering. And you will fill this prayer and be God's agent in the world. Verse 1 of Luke 11 said this, He, that's Jesus, was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, so they've been watching him pray, and after he's finished praying, his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. And Jesus said to them, when you pray, and then the rest of the passage follows. It's an interesting start to the passage. Because it almost sounds like the disciples are coming to Jesus and saying, Jesus, we've been listening to you for some time, but I sense you've left something out of your curriculum. We know John has taught his disciples to pray. Why haven't you included this in our curriculum yet? Perhaps it's like two students, one doing accountancy at UJ and one doing accountancy at BITS. And they're getting to the end of their third year and the one from BITS is saying, Hey, our lecturer hasn't taught us what they are teaching you in UJ. So they go to the BITS lecturer and say, You haven't taught us this yet. It almost sounds like the disciples are comparing teachers and saying, You've left something out of your curriculum, Jesus. But that's not what is going on here at all. The disciples are not asking to be taught how to pray in the sense of we don't know how to pray. They are good Jewish men and they have been praying since childhood and they know how to pray. They're not necessarily being asked for an advanced course in prayer either. What they are asking is a particular prayer that Jesus as rabbi would have developed. So you see, in those days, each rabbi developed their own prayer. And the prayer was the reflection on how they related to the Torah, the law. And how they said, this is what is most important in God's will. And each rabbi had, its own, had his own prayer. And it was a very more important moment in the disciple of any rabbi to go to the, to the rabbi and say, teach us your prayer. Teach us the prayer that you believe sums up your teaching. And then the rabbi would teach his disciples that prayer. And that prayer would become the disciples' prayer and would form and inform them for the rest of their lives. That prayer would give them direction. They would pray that prayer every day. So it is a very important and precious moment when disciples come to the rabbi and say, would you now teach us your prayer? And so that's what's happening here. The disciples have decided it's the moment to ask Jesus, what is his prayer that sums up his teaching? That says, this is what it's all about. This is how I relate to God's will. This is how I stay on track. Because of course Jesus would have been praying this prayer as rabbis prayed their own prayer. Jesus would have prayed this prayer. This is the prayer that kept him on track. And now he passes it on to his disciples and says, this prayer will keep you on track, will keep you on the path, will keep you going in the direction. This prayer will enable you to be my disciple. This prayer will be like a builder's plan, the architect's plan for the builder. 
the builder must build each day and the builder must consult the plans of the architect each day. That's what the Lord's Prayer is all about, is you and I are called to build the kingdom each day. We turn to the Lord's Prayer to know how do we build God's kingdom. How do we be faithful to God's kingdom? How do we honor God's reign? That's the role of this prayer. The Lord's Prayer is a meeting place. I also want to say it's like a meeting place. It's a meeting place between you and God. It's a meeting place between you and God. It's a meeting place between God's reign and your participation in that reign. It's a meeting place between God's kingdom and your consciousness of that kingdom. It's a meeting place between God's will and your faithfulness to that will. Dallas Willard referred to prayer in this way. It's a lovely definition for prayer. He said, prayer is talking to God about what we are doing together. Prayer is talking to God about what we are doing together. The evil doers of God, but there is a sense that the space has been invaded and the spiritual atmosphere of the home has changed. And, the, and through prayer, that spiritual atmosphere must be changed back to the good. We must be delivered from that evil that entered the home or entered the sanctuary or entered the campus place. Friends, we live in a world of much evil, evil people, evil systems, evil spirits. And this is the part in the Lord's Prayer where we pray to God, because remember it is a prayer, trusting God, deliver us from evil, deliver us from evil. And so it is important that every day we do spend time asking God to deliver us from evil. Please pray for that every day. And there are many ways in which we need to pray for that for our nation. Maybe we'll be talking about praying in the dark. There are many ways in which we need to pray for it for our nation. And a picture that I've been using in my prayers is along the lines of, you know, when there has been this robbery but now the evildoers have gone, but you're needing to pray for that atmosphere in the building. I've been praying with that picture in my mind as I pray for our state. Because there have been some individuals that have now left their offices because they've been exposed. But what's the atmosphere in those offices What's the atmosphere in those networks, those committee meetings they used to sit in? I've been praying that the atmosphere in those places changes. Yes, Brian Mulef is, Malusi Bigalb is, and so on, are no longer in their offices, but what's that corridors like? What's those committee meetings like? Has the evil that was there been removed in the spiritual realm? Has it been removed in the spiritual realm? And I, I want to say that, can I give this to you as a way to pray for our nation? That things are changing in the spiritual realm, in the corridors, in the committee rooms, over the phone calls, over those friendships the networks. And remember, it's not just government, it's business as well. And it's the connected people. Can we be praying to be delivered from evil?
Thank you, Lord, for the Lord's prayer. Thank you, Lord, for the Lord's prayer. And each of us today commit ourselves to this prayer. It feels too big for us. It feels too big for us. But I thank you that praying a day, persisting, as you taught us to persist, to persevere, can accomplish great things as we think even of Abraham and his debating with you. Much things can be done. You call us to pray. There is much we need to do, but there is much that we need to ask you to do. So keep us faithful to this prayer. And help us to grow up. And not just be Christians, but to be disciples. To be kingdom people. And I pray now, Lord, for this congregation. I pray now, Lord, for this congregation. I pray for this place. And I pray, as many have prayed already, for there to be the protection from evil here. Loving Lord, those who entered the building and robbed, may you bring light into their lives that their intention to do more evil would be changed. That they would now turn to you and turn to your light. That they would no longer be a source of evil for themselves or for those around them. I pray for a change of heart in the evil doers committed that robbery. I pray for a change of heart in the evildoers who committed that robbery. I pray, loving Lord, for your spirit to break through, to break through. I pray, Lord, that, that we trust you to go where we cannot go, into a human heart. I pray for that. I pray, Lord, that any evil further intents that they have would not come to anything would fail with you. One way or another, I pray, Lord, that it is now the end of evil influence. Yes. I pray, Lord, that it is now the end, either through your changing of the hearts of the evildoers or through your frustrating the plans of the evildoers, that they turn on each other and break up as a as a gap. Thieves. I pray, Lord, for your protection. I pray, Lord, for your healing and the protection for Reverend Chabalada and his wife. I pray, Lord, for your protection of Reverend Tombo. pray, Lord, for your light and healing to be strong in this place. I pray for that. This is a survivor congregation. Help the Lord for all the healing that they need. Help them each week to come into this place and they sense more and more of your light and, and of your blessing, your anointing on this place. I pray, Lord, that week by week it gets stronger and stronger and stronger. And then, Lord, I pray for, for us as a church, our congregation, my congregation, this congregation, our calling as congregations, that we would indeed be the light that you call us to be, the salt that you call us to be, flavoring the society, giving direction for the society. We live in dark times, we live in dark times. Lord, I pray as each one of us gives ourselves to you today, be at work, be at work, be at work in us, be at work through us. Help us to make decisions in the present. Thank you for meeting us each moment from the future with possibilities. Thank you for how you change our futures through those possibilities you offer. There is so much to pray. We pray in this prayer. We thank you for this time of our sharing. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Christians who believe in Jesus. They believe in Jesus. Particularly that... Jesus will, of course, forgive them for their sins and they will go to heaven one day. But they don't believe in the kingdom of God, which was Jesus' vision of how we should be living in this world. A kingdom person would not do what has been done in state capture.
There are many people who are Christians but not kingdom people. In other words, they are Christians but not disciples of Jesus. And when Jesus taught, teaches us to pray, He makes the kingdom of God the priority. He says, Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I really want to say to you that our most important duty as Christians is to preach and to teach the kingdom. That we may be a church that is awake what it means to be kingdom people because it is in the kingdom that Jesus is Revealed to us how life should be here on earth. Jesus does not want to be separated from his kingdom. It is because of the kingdom that Jesus offers us that Jesus is hope for the world. Jesus is not just hope for the world because he gives us somewhere to go when we die. Jesus is hope for the world because he helps us solve the problems of the world. The problems of fallenness and the problems of evil. But we have to be true to Jesus' teachings if we are to experience Jesus' hope for the world. It is His kingdom that is hope for the world. Jesus must not be separated from His kingdom. In many ways, Jesus would want us to realize it's not He Himself that's the hope for the world. It's His kingdom that is hope for the world. Now this is a major problem in Southern Africa. A major, major problem in Southern Africa. Because we have had for so long Christian leaders who are not kingdom people. And you can take it all the way back to, to the beginning. No, not the beginning. Since the time of the arrival of the settlers who came as Christians. Jan van Riebeck and the settlers who took the land, they are Christians, they were Christians. D.F. Malan, one of the architects of apartheid, was a Christian. Queen Victoria, who took so much of the wealth of Africa, for the British Empire was a Christian. Hendrik for good, a Christian. Jacob Zuma, a pastor. Esmaga <laughs> Shule, a YMG member. <laughs> so, so we have this problem. Since Jan van Riebeck, we seem to have been led by thieves. Oh. <laughs> thieves who are Christians. <laughs> so, so no wonder evangelism is so difficult for us. We say to somebody, Jesus is hope for the world. And they say, I've seen your Christians. Don't talk to me about Jesus as hope for the world. I've seen what your Christians have done. The only way to fix that is to be faithful to the kingdom of God. And Jesus offers us the kingdom and, and his teachings show us the way of the kingdom. And in the Lord's Prayer, he says, Pray daily, thy kingdom come. Thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Friends, I have a very specific message that God laid on my heart and I'm changing gears slightly now. God laid on my heart, to, in, in, it was about two weeks ago, I was thinking a lot already about my time with you and, and, and this is something very specific and, and I'm being faithful to what I sense. Um, and let us see if God is saying something to you in this. So you are known as a congregation, vibrant, 
You are known as survivors. The history of CMN has been a very difficult history. And Rev. Tombo has led you through many, many difficult times. And we, as a denomination, but not just the Methodists, many churches are in decline. Things are going downhill. The church seems to be fading away. And yet I know your heart is to be a vibrant community. A viable church. Something very real. In this very difficult place of Joburg, Joburg City Centre Joburg. And I want to encourage you in this. I want to encourage you because so much is at stake in the church and in society. I want to encourage you to, to be the best you can be as a church. I want to encourage you to see the value of trying to shine brightly in these difficult, dark times. So much is at stake. The witness of the church is at stake. The soul of the nation is at stake. We need congregations that are good places to go to. Places where the worship is real, places where the teaching of the kingdom is true. We need that. We need that. And I know you want to be that, and I'm encouraging you in that. And I want to affirm the value of that endeavor. And the picture I have that I want to give to you is this. So in the midst of a dysfunctional society and a crumbling denomination and so on, in the midst of that, a vital, vibrant congregation can, can be a safe harbor for many, can be a lifeline for many, can be the one place that holds them together, keeps them sane, keeps them in the faith, and keeps them with hope. The picture I have for you is it's almost like, you know, in many of our families, there can be many problems in the families. But you have a grandmother who prays and who holds the family together. I want to say a good church is like that grandmother. There can be a lot of mischief going on in the family. But the grandmother who holds them together and tries her best, in spite of all the mischief, in spite of all the trouble, holds them together, tries her best to, to hold the family together. That grandmother has great value precisely because of the crisis within the family. A congregation like yours that is vital and vibrant and faithful has value precisely because there are many troubles around. And so I really want to encourage you in this journey that, that there is so much value to, to being the best you can be. And that's just a message God has laid on me to share with you. You will leave a legacy like many grandchildren who talk about their grandmother, you know, they will say, it is because of my grandmother that I can do what I have done. Can it be that it even grows the number of people who say, it is because of CMM that I can do that, that, that. Please, God. And then, the last thing I want to extract from the Lord's Prayer is this. 
Uh, right towards the end of the Lord's Prayer, it says, Deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. Now, you as a congregation would know what I'm talking about from your recent experience of the robbery. That when robbers have been in the building, They've taken what they wanted to take. That, that it's important to have prayer afterwards in the building. And I know you would have done that. Pray in the building to, to have that, that evil influence that has entered the building to be removed from the building. And, and I, I, I know we do this as pastors when somebody's had a burglary or robbery at their home, they call the minister, the pastor, the priest, and say, please come and pray in my house. The evil doers have gone, but there is a sense that the space has been invaded and the spiritual atmosphere of the home has changed. And, the, and through prayer, that spiritual atmosphere must be changed back to the good. We must be delivered from that evil that entered the home, or entered the sanctuary, or entered the campus, the place. Friends, we live in a world of much evil, evil people, evil system, evil spirits. And this is the part in the Lord's Prayer where we pray to God, because remember it is a prayer, trusting God. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. And so it is important that every day we do spend time asking God to deliver us from evil. Please pray for that every day. And there are many ways in which we need to pray for that for our nation. Maybe we're talking about praying in the dark. There are many ways in which we need to pray for it for our nation. And a picture that I've been using in my prayers is along the lines of, you know, when there has been this wrong. The evil doers have gone, but there is a sense that the space has been invaded and the spiritual atmosphere of the home has changed. And, the, and through prayer, that spiritual atmosphere must be changed back to the good. We must be delivered from that evil that entered the home, or entered the sanctuary, or entered the campus, the place. Friends, we live in a world of much evil, evil people, evil system, evil spirits. And this is the part in the Lord's Prayer where we pray to God, because remember it is a prayer, trusting God, deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. And so it is important that every day we do spend time asking God to deliver us from evil. Please pray for that every day. And there are many ways in which we need to pray for that for our nation. Maybe we'll be talking about praying in the dark. There are many ways in which we need to pray for it for our nation. And a picture that I've been using in my prayers is along the lines of, you know, when there has been this robbery, but now the evildoers have gone, but you're needing to pray for the atmosphere in the building. I've been praying with that picture in my mind as I pray for our state. Because there have been some individuals that have now left their offices because they've been exposed. But what's the atmosphere in those offices? What's the atmosphere in those networks, those committee meetings they used to sit in? I've been praying that the atmosphere in those places 
change it. Yes, Brian Bullet is Lucy Gigabas and so on are no longer in their offices, but what's that corridors like? What's those committee meetings like? Has the evil that was there been removed in the spiritual realm? Has it been removed in the spiritual realm? And I, I want to say that can I give this to you as a way to pray for our nation? That things are changing in the spiritual realm, in the corridors, in the committee rooms, over the phone calls, over those friendships, the networks. And remember, it's not just government, it's business as well. And it's the connected people. Can we be praying to be delivered from evil?
pray, Lord, for your light and leading to be strong in this place. Pray for that. This is a survivor congregation. Help the Lord for all the healing that they need. Help them each week to come into this place and they sense more and more of your light and, and of your blessing, your anointing on this place. Pray, Lord, that week by week it gets stronger and stronger and stronger. And then, Lord, I pray for, for us as church, our congregation, my congregation, this congregation, our calling as congregations, that we would indeed be the light that you call us to be, the salt that you call us to be, flavoring the society, giving direction for the society. We live in dark times, we live in dark times. Lord, I pray as each one of us gives ourselves to you today, be at work, be at work, be at work in us, be at work through us. Help us to make decisions in the present. Thank you for meeting us each moment from the future with possibilities. Thank you for how you change our futures through those possibilities you offer. There is so much to pray. We pray this prayer. We thank you for this time of our sharing. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.